Two local athletes has committed and getting ready to head to college. Lancaster continues to roll in basketball, and one team also gets their first two wins over the weekend. Good evening, everyone, and we welcome you in to Northern Exports Talk Live here on Hot Mix VA. Myself, Will Lewis, along with Coach Thomas Rhodes, Sammy Mills cannot be with us tonight. But, Coach, how was your weekend before we get all started with all of what we got going on tonight? How was your weekend, sir? I'm real good this weekend. I ain't doing too much. Sit back, you know, watch a little bit of football, chill with my little lady at home. You know, wife had to work, so it was just me and her. So, we ain't doing too much. Play a little bit of checkers, try to teach her how to play chess. Oh, you know? oh wow. Chess okay. a real life game and everything. So, trying to teach her how to play that and everything. How about yourself? Uh, always busy. Uh, I'll have to do a little skating. Oh, skating. Uh, I may be doing a little bit more skating this weekend. <laughs> uh, not by uh, my decision, uh -huh. by the way, but I, I may have to do a little bit more skating again this weekend, too. But we'll, we'll go a little bit deeper into that later <laughs> on. You're locked into Nordic Sports Talk Live here on Hot Mix VA on a Tuesday evening. So we thank each and every one of you for tuning in tonight. It's episode 19. We'll be right back live. Nordic we'll Sports Talk Live on Hot Mix VA. Nordic Sports Talk Live. Myself, Will Lewis, along with Coach Thomas Rowe. Planet Entertainment presents the second annual Kings of Southern Soul. Sunday, April 30th. Coming to the Prince William County Fairgrounds, Manassas, Virginia. Performing live, King George. One Monday don't stop, no show. Very special guest, Chaka. P2K. Sir Charles Jones. Pokey Bear. Calvin Richardson. Jay One. Big G. King South. Jay Morris Group, E.D. Lamar Bryce, Fat Daddy, Cadillac Man, and West Love. With special added attraction, DJ Cleave. Hosted by Andy B. Plus a big car show and a lot more. Gates open 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Showtime 3 p.m. Tickets on sale now. Kings of Southern Soul 2 VA. For more info, call 252 578 3504. Second annual Kings of Southern Soul at the Prince William County Fairground. Winner 624, Dolphins Road, Manassas, Virginia. Rain or shine, Sunday, April 30th. We welcome you back into Northern Next Sports Talk Live here on Hot Mix VA on a rainy Tuesday evening. Good, good evening, everyone. And before we get started, Coach, yeah. check out this hoodie. Hey, man. Tiffany Fly. Ricks did it again. Hey, she, well, she Rick's attention, I'll tell you what. I love it. Hey, she always do good work, man. So anybody out there looking for any, you know, T-shirts, coffee mugs, anything like that, man, hit up Tiffany Rich. Rich Intentions, man, right here in Tabahannon, Virginia, man. She'll definitely get you straight, man. So all you got to do Hit her up, and you know, whatever you need, she can get it done. All right, let's get to uh, last Thursday night, and we'll start from there as yeah. far as scores and highlights mm -hmm. from last week in basketball. And Colonial Beach gets yeah. their first win. We talked about it last week about them not getting wins and uh, how they able to gain their confidence. All of a sudden, Coach, they get two wins within the next couple of days last week. And the first one comes from Colonial Beach and King and Queen. Colonial Beach beats King and Queen in right. overtime, 73 to 67. Hey, man, all you got to do is keep grinding. You know what I'm saying? I mean, eventually somebody going to get tired of losing. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. you're going you know, to give it all you gotta, got to be able to get a win. You know, you know, eventually the coach must have put together a great game plan for the young student athletes over there. And they was able to go out on the court against King and Queen to get it done. You know what I mean? They put up some good, decent points, too, and, they, and was able to capitalize in overtime to come away with the win. So it's a real good salute over there to Colonial Beach to those players over there, man. I'm looking to see y'all get a couple more wins before the season is over, which, and, which it ain't long. No, it's so not long at all. season is winding down, so, you know, if you want to get some more wins in it, you got to continue to grind, and, you know, you might get one before the end of the season is over. And King and Queen is a tough team to play. Yeah, they, they have always had a good tough group of kids up there. You know, most of the kids, they come right on over from the football squad when the season's right. over. So those same group of kids that's on the football field grinding every Friday night is the same group of kids that you see most likely coming out on the basketball field to grind through the week on the hard court, too. All right, let's get to Friday. A bunch of scores from a Friday. Yes, sir. Uh, JV Boys Basketball, Lancaster of Westmoreland, 53-35. Boys Varsity and... This one here was kind of a odd foul. Uh -huh. Boys Varsity, Lancaster of Westmoreland, 58 to 39. The cheerleading squad.
gets called for a technical foul for stepping over the line during cheering. <laughs> where, where the cheering is located at? I mean, I know over in Essex, the cheerleaders are at the at the end courts where the right. That's are. exactly where it was. So where the cheerleaders are at. So usually, what the ref does is, hey, step back. Uh -huh. You're on the court. We can't have you on the court. Okay. This is the first time I've known of that cheerleaders got called for a technical foul in a very long time. I mean, was it a, a straight technical, straight off the break? Wasn't no warning given? Or I don't think like there that? was a warning, from my understanding. But uh, if uh, if anybody was at the game. As to exactly what happened. All we know is that it was a technical foul on the cheerleading squad, For West which Moore. caused Westmoreland a couple of points. Well, I mean, you know, they, they, they have to be out of the way, you know, because you definitely don't want them and the young ladies to end up getting hurt or anything like that. But right. I mean, that, to me, that's a little petty. Yeah. You know, just tell the ladies to step back and, you know, continue the game to keep on rolling and everything like that. You, I don't think a technical should have been given to the cheerleaders. You know, they, they, they're not going to impact the game none. Yeah. Unless they're in the in the way of play when the you know when the ball gets down that end of the court, but other than that, you know even if there was a step over the line, I wouldn't even think that would be a, a big of a deal in no. my book. No, not at all. And like I said, you know this is the first that I've known of yeah. in a very long time that any cheerleading squad got called for a technical foul for their own team. Yeah, now Lakes are Lakes are continuing to roll, coach. Still undefeated. Yeah. So let's move over to. The uh, Rappahannock game, Rappahannock over Northumberland, 66 to 62, and congrats to Rappahannock for their first them, district win. Yeah, that puts them at now four and eleven. So for them to get their first district win, that that really set Northside back a little yes. bit because they was in front of them. You know, it, it, those district games coming in right now are real important. You know, it affects the seedings of the tournaments and everything like that. You know, and so for them, you know, Northside to lose a in district game like that to a, a lower seed in Rappahannock is, you know, quite defeating in my in my in my in my opinion. You know, but you know, it's still a couple more games back in in, in before the season ends. So you never know if Northside plays Rappahannock again, they might be able to get that win back. But you know, only time will tell us depending on if they play again during the season. Yeah, indeed. All right, let's get to uh, a couple of other scores here. Northampton okay. over Charles City, 91 to 48. Essex over Colonial Beach, uh, 65 to 27. And then Carver Academy. Let's talk about them for a minute. Yeah. Carver Academy over West Point, 106 to 31. Yeah, man, that was crazy. 106 to 31. But I mean, West Point is a, a lower seeded, you know, team, you know, and I mean, you can't, I mean, Carver Academy, they have to be a, a more high-powered, you know, team, to, you know, to put up those type of points, man. You know, right, I, yeah. I'm not really sure of the stats from each player, but, you know, everybody had to be moving on one accord that day, you know, to put up 100 and some points. And not just that, the defense was, was shut down. You know, to yeah. keep West Point at 30-some points, that's real good. So that's going to be real big going down the stretch of the tournament playoffs and everything like that. I mean, you know, Langston, they're at the top of the seed right now, but there's a lot of teams, you know, in the 1A division that's got good records that Langston hasn't faced during the season yet. So, you know, once the tournament, you know, comes, it's going to be real good to see which teams be coming out on top. Oh, yeah. And let's move on to Saturday real quick. Lancaster uh, and LCA. I wanted, I wanted to touch on this real quick. Lancaster yeah. was down at halftime against LCA yeah. at halftime, then Lancaster began to pull away in the third quarter. So the final was Lancaster 50, LCA 38. That was a real close game, and uh, probably one of the toughest games Lancaster had. Well, I mean, LCA, they're, they're a great program up there in Chester, Virginia. Um, reason why I know about them because one of my um, homeboys, Coach Charles Scott, he used to be the head football coach for the program up there. And, um, my son, my oldest, well, my youngest son that's in seeing, you had the opportunity to transfer there when, you know, right. COVID hit and everything like that, when he lost his, I think it was his 11th grade year, which is his junior season. So he lost that season and had a chance to transfer up there, but, you know, we chose to stay home and everything. So LCA plays a national schedule as far as on the football level, meaning, you know, they might go to at Georgia somewhere and play in Florida, anywhere, you know, so... I'm pretty sure the basketball team up there isn't national, you know, traveling like that, but they do play a lot of visa, 
independent scheduled teams or whatever like that. So they, they came in LCA at 11 and 8, I believe. I'm not mm -hmm. sure, don't quote me at that. But, you know, they stepped up when I think it was Brunswick supposed to have played last, right. and I yeah. think Brunswick dropped out or whatever. So LCA stepped up to play them. And I mean, for Langston to go up there to play uh, an independent school like that and get the win, it was excellent. You know, you figure Troy, Troy Henderson put up uh, big numbers, 27 points. Um, his brother Tyson Henderson put up um, 15 points. And as Jerry Owens, I'm not sure if I'm saying that young man's first name right, but his young soldier Owens over there, he put up four points. And Xavier Owens, they put up four points. So I mean, a 50 to 38 win over over a team like that is great in my eyes, you know. So I salute to them for continuing to roll along, and, and I mean, I hope, I'm hoping that they go real long in, in the tournament, yeah, and yeah, possibly definitely. bring that bring that trophy back to the Northern Mega. And we talked about this last week, Coach. Lancaster is a state championship game yeah. uh, team. Yeah. The way they are playing right now. Yeah. I mean, they they got the capabilities of winning it. Right. I mean, from the offensive side, they're scoring. They can score anywhere, on, anywhere on the court from the three-point line into the paint. You no know, free throws and everything like that. They're not just on the offensive side of everything. They can eat, they can even do it on the defensive side. They can shut down your offense, keep you at a low scoring pace, and I mean, they can just dominate everywhere on on, on the basketball court. Rebounds, offense rebounds, defensive rebounds, steals, blocks. They, they just got the total package to be able to do what they need to do to win the state championship, in my opinion. And even one uh, viewer that was watching that game uh -huh. that was for the opposing team even said that was by far the greatest show on the court. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of people say that it, it, the boys did an excellent job, you know, especially for the opponent that they was facing. It wasn't a, another, you know, 1A division team. Right. No, this was a independent school, you know. Life Christian, which I, if, if you're a big football head, then you know about Life Christian being playing football at the national level. So I'm pretty sure their basketball team is doing the exact same thing. You know, might not be as big as the football team because I know Coach Charles Scott, mm -hmm. you know, he, he used to have the boys going. Right. But as the, as the basketball squad, I, they, they play a lot of top t talent. So for Langston to go in and get that one over them was, was very great. When we come back, we'll talk some more about the scores from over the weekend to include some scores from last night and what is in progress tonight. You're locked into Northern X Sports Talk Live right here on Hot Mix VA. More tuition assistance is available than ever, paving the way for debt-free education and training. And Rappahannock Community College is here to help. Earn a degree, certification, or even start college in high school. Success starts here. What are you waiting for? We welcome you back into Northern Next Sports Talk Live here on Hot Mix VA. And hey, you're not only able to hear us here on the radio, but on Thursdays, catch us on the YouTube stream channel, put us on your big screen, get your popcorn ready, <laughs> sit back and relax before the Super Bowl happens. Yes, sir. Make us your pregame before the actual pregame. That's even in college, but yeah. basketball too. Yeah. The, and yeah. NASCAR is coming up this weekend as well. Yeah, make us your pregame before the actual pregame or free race. You'll, you'll love it on the big screen. Yes, sir. All right, Coach, let's get back to the scores from over the weekend. And um, we do have one score that is in as of for tonight. And JV, Lancaster over Colonial Beach, 76-16 to 16 in JV. Varsity is getting ready to happen as we speak. Also, mm -hmm. other games in progress is Northumberland, Essex, Westmoreland, and Rappahannock. Now, from last week, Middlesex over Matthews, 82 to 48. Essex over North Stafford, 66 to 38. Let's talk about Essex real quick. I mean, Essex, you know, right now, you know, we, before we got to Colonia Beach and North Stafford, you know, we took a loss to, I think, it was, we took a loss to Westside and we took a loss to, you know, Lancaster, so we had to bounce back, you know. Got two wins back to back, you know, one against Colonia Beach, boys did real good. Then, you know, we had a game on 128 against uh, a, a bigger division school in North Stafford, you know, that, you know, the boys took a slug to them early in the season right. where they lost 75 to 54. So to see them come back, you know, to play them again in the season and turn around and get a win, not just a win, but, a, you know, a nice size win on the score, you know, 66 to 38 over North Stafford, you know, 
you know, the boys did real good in my book. You know, Cam Robinson again, another big game, came in with 29 points, 15 rebounds, three steals, and one block. You know, one man show. You know, if, if, if you ain't gonna double him, he's gonna give you the business. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, not just him, you know, his, his comrades, Malachi Thornton came in with 14 points, uh, three steals, and three assists. Then Dorian came in and rounded off for eight points, eight rebounds, and another three steals. So again, you know, even though, you know, the, the record that they have isn't, you know, what they want or, you know, and everything like that, they're still going out every every, right. every week and competing. You know, they're they they're not gonna just let you run over them. No, they're gonna they're gonna compete all four quarters and give it all they all they got, you know, and, and make the best man win, and that's how it's supposed to be. And the thing about doubling up a good team and uh, a, a good uh, player is that you live by the double up yeah. and then you tie by the double up yeah. because if you double up one player Guess what? Somebody Another one's open. open. Somebody gonna be open, man. I'm pretty sure you double up one, somebody gonna be open to either hit a three or a two point, you know, something like that, you know. So as long as they keep on grinding, I'm pretty sure they'll still be able to make some noise before the season. And it's, you know, we got a couple more games. I think yep. maybe three, four more games before the season end, then we're kicking off into the tournament. So anything, anything's liable anything, to happen. You know, all on home, on willing to come every weekend and, and play and grind and give it their all every week, you know. All right, Coach, let's get to Monday, which was last night. Uh, JV, Bruton over Lancaster, 54 to, no, that's 64 to 61. JV boys, Lancaster, first loss for JV boys for the Red Devils. Their, their first loss? Their very first they, loss. But you just said, what, they just won against who? Bruton. That they lost against they Bruton. Lost who against they Bruton. Tonight? They just won a game tonight. They won a game 76 to 16 against well, hey, the Blue Beach. So there you go. <laughs> Put the word. They, they, they took that loss. That's what you call building off of a loss. Right. They didn't take the loss and just sit there and soft in it and one. Well, no, they, they, they bounced back real quickly at 70, 60, 16. That's what a 60 point, 60 point spread. Right. So I mean, yeah. hey, you know, that, that's what you're supposed to do. Take a take a loss, learn from it, listen to your coach. Next game, bounce back from it and dominate whoever steps in front of you on the court. And that's how it gotta be, man. I mean, Lakes are gonna be a tough. A tough program to handle for, for the next couple of years, man. Yeah. I mean, probably for a couple of years, especially when the JV is able to take a loss like that and able to bounce back from it. You know, I don't, I don't know none of the young youngins over there on the JV squad. You know, not yet, but I mean, with the noise uh, they're making right now, we're definitely, you know, gonna know that know, we're gonna know their names in the future. Then on the west side, you have this middle school team at yeah. Montrose Middle School, eighth yeah. graders. Getting ready to head into JV. Yeah. And so this is going to be a very tight yeah. race come yeah. next year, by this time next year. Uh, Between uh, Westmoreland and Lancaster, with them two JV teams, they, from what I've seen on Montrose Middle School Boys basketball team, uh -huh. undefeated, and they're getting ready to head into JV, possibly varsity. This is going to be a very good Little Neck District basketball. It's definitely shaping up to be like that, but I'm just hoping over here, that's as we can get us an eighth grade program going. You know, Sam tried to throw that jab right. over last week. I, I, I told him, it was real good, but it's the truth. You know, yeah. I'm just hoping somebody over this side can be able to step up and, and get us an eighth grade team program over there. Start it that way, because I mean, it's, it's very important for these kids right. to be able to start at an early age, to be able to know the fundamentals of the game, and just being able to learn and, and play with the kids that they're actually going to school with every year. You know, if yeah. you can build that chemistry right now while they're young, it's only going to pay off when they get older and when they get into high school and be able to compete at the next level. So I'm, I'm hoping to pray somebody over this end will start get that eighth grade program, eighth grade basketball team going over here so our, you know, our kids can be able to flourish at that basketball sp sport too, just like everybody else. You know, even though we do flourish at it, but if they can learn the fundamentals Earlier, just right. like everybody else. Oh, ain't, ain't no, ain't no doubt in my mind. We'll be, you know, rolling over everybody just like in football. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. All right, let's get to Monday night for varsity. Yeah. Like Sir of course, beating Bruton, eighty-one to forty-six, and a whole lot of stats for Troy and Tyson, coach. I mean, them, them boys, man, they are spectacular. Though, I yes. mean, you can tell that they don't just practice, you know, during school time or when the team practices. But they, they probably most likely is outside at home 
They act a while over there, over there practicing or wherever they go to practice. They are constantly working on that game, man. And not just the two brothers, but the whole team. The whole team. It's a whole team effort, man. The, I mean, I think they got like eight players on that team or whatever, mm -hmm. but I mean, only five can play at one time. And I mean, every man that's on that squad is putting up numbers and participating to be able to do what they're doing over there on that basketball court. All right, let's get to Colonial Beach and King and Queen. Colonial Beach winning again, 69 to 63 over King and Queen and another tough team for Colonial Beach to uh, win against King and Queen. I mean, they, they pulled it off. You know, like like I said earlier, you know, they, they, they got one win and then they turned around and got a win, you know, last week against King Queen. So that's the only, only thing you can ask for in the team is to just keep, you know, keep grinding and keep trying to get a win, never surrender or, or never give up. And I mean, as long as they never give up, you know, you, you're always a win in the end. All right, let's get to Northumberland and West Point. Northumberland winning over West Point 70 to 42. Then we'll get to the girls' side of things. No side. I mean, they just they just lost the rap, you know, so they, they was able to bounce back, you know, so that's real good. It seemed like they're another team that even though they just lost, they was able to bounce back quick. And I mean, that that's all you can ask for in a team, you know. They got a good group of kids over there that's been together for a while from playing on the AAU level and, and on up to now. And I, I mean, a lot, a lot of those players over there at Northside too next year are about to be seniors. Yeah. Just like from the football season this last year, all of them are about to be seniors next year. So they're, they're looking to make some good noise this 20, 2023 year too from on the football side and the basketball side. So it's pretty exciting. And to you see. can closely see how the Northern Neck District in basketball right now is getting oh, I, closer I got, yeah, I, and yeah, closer, it's getting closer and closer yeah. as the games wind down. Yeah. So this is going to be a very exciting tournament coming up. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to be really exciting. You know, hopefully – you know, Temples will stay down, you know, and, right. and, and don't nobody get ejected or anything right. like that. Just yeah. give some good basketball, you know, because that's all we want yeah, is good all basketball. Is good, good basketball. Good basketball and make the best team win, you know, which is a lot of talent in the area. And they're, they're definitely about to put on a show in the next couple of weeks. When we come back, we'll get to the girls and how the New Neck District is looking and the girls' side of things in basketball and all. You're locked into New Neck Sports Talk Live here on Hot Mix VA. Listen to Hot Mix VA Radio, brought to you in part by Seagull's Legacy Event Center, the event establishment that will exceed your expectations. Book them now for your wedding receptions, birthday party, family affair, or church function. Let them bring happiness to you and each and every one of your guests. Dinner options are only available on the weekends. Now back to your regular scheduled program on Hot Mix VA Radio. So fresh, so clean. You're locked in to Northern <laughs> X Sports Talk Live here on Hot Mix VA. And uh, before we get to anything else, Coach, we have another score that came in. It's at yes, halftime. Essex is leading Northumberland right now in varsity, 29-22 to 22 at halftime. Yes, and a score from JV, Lancaster over Colonial Beach, 76-16. to 16, And Westmoreland and Rappahannock is also playing as we speak right yes, now. Sir. All right, let's get to the girls' side of things from uh, Monday. King and Queen over Colonial Beach, 43-40. to 40. Jamestown over Essex, 61-29. to 29. You have some stats from that game. Uh, yes, uh, Jamestown, you know, unfortunately, you know, our girls, the week before, well, on the 26th, we played Colonial Beach. We got a rematch with them, and we was able to bounce back uh, on Colonial Beach. That was a rematch. The girls lost the first time that they played them. But they was able to get a um, you know the win on the rematch, fifty four to fifty one in overtime, you know. Um, but on the thirtieth we played Jamestown, and unfortunately we took a loss, you know. But I mean, again, those ladies have came out all year and, and battled hard, you know, against some good competition. Never never back down from anything. Even though in the in the loss, you know, um, the junior Jalen Mercy she came up big with twelve points, you know, a couple steals and and everything like that. And the other ladies came in and put up some points too, but you know, the only thing we can say to them is just keep grinding, keep putting your foot in the dirt and never never giving up and never backing down and everything. And continue representing that purple and gold is all with pride, baby. All right, let's get to uh, Christ Church of Rappahannock, 54 to 34. One of the few losses Rappahannock had yeah. uh, this season, but they are still in a very good shape position. Yeah. 
I mean, Christ Church, that's another, you know, independent school down there. Right. I think Christ Church is going down there towards, where, 17? That's right? down 17. Yeah, so, I mean, that's another independent, you know, you know, school that's, you know, plays harder competition. Right. So, even even in a, like I say sometimes, I mean, even in the laws, there's a lesson to be learned. You know, so, I mean, some laws actually get, get you better, you know, for competition later on down the road. So, I mean, they're not going to face Christ Church in the tournament or anything like that. So even though they lost, they from what I heard, they played them close, didn't they? Yeah, they played them real I mean, close. So I mean, so, that, that's a win. That is still a win. That's a win, even though you lost. So I mean, for them to take the loss to Christ Church is only going to make them better. You know, the girls are now what thirteen and three. They are thirteen and three. So I mean, they, they have the best record in the Northern Neck, and I'm pretty sure they they are at the top spot in the one A division. I, I believe I'm not for sure. But I mean, they're gonna make some noise, you know. It's right. The only, the only per, the only team that I believe that can stop them when it comes down to the tournament is them. You know, other than that, I don't see nobody else stepping in in front of them. You know, they, they have the coach that that can get them there, and they have the players that can get them there. The only thing they have to do is continue to work hard, and I mean, just keep grinding and never, never giving up. And as we said in the last couple of episodes, this is another state championship team yeah. that could go all the way and we could be seeing two trophies coming back home. Yeah, they definitely got what it takes, you know, and I mean, I'm, I'm one of the ones that's hoping that they can go the whole distance and bring a trophy back to the Northern Neck, because I mean, we, we've been itching for another one to get down oh, here yeah. for a long time, and it's, uh, it's only a matter of time that somebody's going to end up bringing it, whether it's in football, basketball, baseball, track, it, it's only a matter of time. Alright, let's get to some of the uh, district standings for Rappahannock girls real quickly, and of course they're 13 and three. Yeah. This was as of last night. Yeah. Uh, 13 and three for Rappahannock, three and zero. Essex from the looks of it, they are four and seven right yeah. now, and two and three. Westmoreland one and two and five and nine, kind of, kind of in that between somewhat record. Yeah. Uh, trying to get the flow going. Yeah. Every so often, Colonial Beach, of course, one and three, and six and eleven. Okay. Now we have the boys district standings. We all know what, where Lancaster is. Yeah, sixteen yeah. and zero. Probably are seventeen and zero. They're seventeen and zero yeah, now. 17 yeah, they're in. They're seventeen and zero now. Uh, Westmoreland eleven and six. Mm -hmm. So they're right behind them. Yeah. Um, it's still going to be a tough yeah, competition. Is it? Is it it's comes a tough, down to it's a tough between them two. Yeah. But I mean. Every, everybody has what it takes. All it takes is one bad game. One bad game. You know, one exactly bad right. game like can you, set like you back. Like we saw last year. Yeah, one bad game can set you back, and it's always going to come down to who, which team is the more focused. If, if you can be the most focused team, you can definitely pull it off against Lancaster. Just because Lancaster is 17-0, that don't mean that, you know, it can't happen, you know. Right. But it, it's a hard it's a hard <laughs> mountain to climb. I'm trying to tell you that one. It's, a, it's definitely a hard mountain yeah. to climb. All right, Essex uh, right now four and two in nine and eight from as of last night. Yeah. Uh, Northumberland, we talked about them six and seven, two and four. Rappahannock right now four and eleven. Colonial Beach uh, two and eleven, and I believe that's one and six in the yes, district. Yeah, one believe. and six in the district. I mean, the top the top two teams, you know, has has the best shot because they do have the best records. I'm not counting on my Essex Trojans because you know with them, and you can never count out that purple and gold. I don't care who you is. You if you count out that purple and gold, you might well count yourself out. You right. Know what yeah. I'm so I, I'm not gonna say we out of the picture until we actually out of the picture and get prepared for baseball and track. Other than that, we always a fixture in, in, in the equation. Because you still had players from Essex uh -huh. that was on that football team. Yeah. That converted over to basketball. Yeah. So that's where that's where you need to keep an eye on. Yeah. I mean, because this is this is multi sport athletes we're yeah, talking. We we, about. we love competition over this side, and no matter you know how how big of the of the challenge is, we love it over here. You know, it's, it's bred in us over here to love the challenge. Right. So you know, I'm not going to count us out until and like I said, until we are getting ready for baseball and track. Other than that, I think it's still in the picture right now. <laughs> All right, we got some regional standings as well. Yeah. And for the boys in regional standings, like I said, Lancaster, we all know where Lancaster is. Well, now, yeah. Yeah. they're at number one. Yes, sir. So, Alta Vista, at the moment in time when we saw this 
a couple of episodes back, Ultra Vista was at number two. Now yeah. they're at number three, with George number three. Brith at number two. Yes, sir. With a 16 and two record. So mm -hmm. if anybody is going to be competing with Lancaster, and at the state tournament, it looks like George Wythe is be yeah. the competitors. George Wythe looks like they're going to be the competitor because, I mean, if you look down at, at the top 15, you know, out of the top 15, you know, Lancaster has taken out at least four of them. Right. You know what I mean? When I mean taking them out, I mean they took them out with double-digit wins. You know, they took out Alta Vista, and they beat Alta Vista at the number three spot. They beat Alta Vista 8-1-66. You know, and I mean, Middlesex is at the number six spot right now, and their record at 16 and two. But they beat Middlesex twice already this year. Right. The first time they beat them 81 to 30, smoke. You know, the second time they beat them 67 to 35. So, I mean, you know, and then on top of that, you know, you go down to number 10, North Hampton, who's at 13 to six right now. But again, Lancaster beat them twice already. The first time they played, you know, North Northampton, they beat them seventy four to fifty nine. And the second time they played them, they beat them sixty five to fifty five. You know, again, go down to number thirteen out of the top fifteen. At number thirteen West is Moore. Westmoreland. They had eleven and six. Lancaster's already beat them sixty six to thirty eight. Then about a week ago, they beat them fifty eight to thirty nine. So I mean, out of that top fifteen, four of the top fifteen, Lancaster's already taken out. You know, and the only one that I yeah. can really see that it can give them the competition is possibly going to be George Will. You know, and they're coming in at what sixteen and two. Sixteen and two, with George so, I mean, so know, they're almost there. Yeah, so, right at, right with Lancaster. Yes, so sir. It, it's going to be interesting to see when we yeah. get into the state competition of yeah. things how well both teams is going to be playing. Yeah, I mean, you you I would also like to look and see. What competition George Wythe has played this year too? That right. that could possibly be a, a, a tall tale sign of you know how good actually are, is their team. You know, but eventually we're gonna get to see. You know, if if is Langston the team that we are expecting to be? Yeah, greatest show on court. From what uh, one viewer said watching the game this yeah. past weekend, yes, sir. Uh, they they said Langston is the greatest show on court right now. I mean, they got the players to back it up, so yeah. I, I'm hoping they can do it. But you know, <laughs> only time gonna tell. Only time gonna tell. And uh, one note to make: Westmoreland, uh, a few episodes back, we talked about how they were at number at the number eight spot uh -huh. on this list in the region. Now they dropped to number thirteen. Yeah, whole lot, of, whole lot of basketball been playing since then too. Right. And I mean, between them, Westmoreland has took a couple slugs between them, and you know, other teams instead of winning. So. You know, when you take them slugs and other teams still steady winning, sometimes you you know your rank is gonna drop, but that don't that still doesn't mean anything. You know, yeah. it, it's all you know comes down to who won it the most at the end. You know, and I, I I'm not gonna count them out that just yet because like again they have a strong crew over there, and them boys regardless of what everybody said, them boys don't back down at all. No, you know, they're not. And, not at all. They gonna fight. You know, whether it's good or bad, <laughs> <laughs> but they they gonna give it all their all. You know, so. You know, I, I'm still expecting the boys, you know, along with Jordan Saunders to be able to make a good good standing in the tournament, you know, and also salute, up, salute Young Soldier again for your, you know, your commitment to hold you. Go down there and represent, do what you do, and, you know, represent for that Northern neck. Like we always say, man, it's about the whole area. Go down there and show the boys what you got so that way more kids back here can be able to get those same opportunities you're about to embark on. And uh, Super Bowl champion, Westmoreland native, yeah. Tory Smith actually yeah. congratulated yeah. him on Twitter. So, yeah, yeah get that. I, I like to thank Tory Smith for congratulating yeah. him too. So that's that's kind of a big deal uh, for Jordan because Jordan, oh, yeah. Jordan looked at it and he's like, oh, wow, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah congrats to Jordan Saunders from uh, committing to ODU. When we come back, we'll talk some youth football oh, with Coach Rome. You're locked into Northern Next Sports Talk Live here on Hot Mix VA. Okay, Oprah, chill out. Seriously, Tracy, now is a great time to start a new career. Well, yeah, that's why it's so important for folks to get a high school credential and work-ready skills. Yep, at Middle Peninsula Readies, adults can study in class, online, or with a tutor. Adults can take GED prep, reading, English, or computer skills classes. Oh, please, we can also help adults study for their driver's license citizenship test, or team up with area businesses to train for a new career. All for free. For more information and to register for class, call 804-769-1151.
You're locked into Northern Neck Sports Talk live here on Hot Mix BA. We are live in Tampa County, Virginia in the Hot Mix BA studios. So we appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in with us and hanging out with us on a Tuesday night, yes, a rainy sir. Tuesday night. But hey, we are all here. Turn that radio up. Don't worry Turn about it. Loud. Turn it up loud. Let the whole town here. Here. It's all good. All right, coach, let's get to these uh, college bound players real quickly. Yes, sir. And uh, Westmoreland, we talked about Jordan Saunders. He has committed his college football at Old Dominion University. And we're, and, and we're talking about uh, Taylor Heineke's stop, stop the grounds. Yeah. And also, Newell Neck District defensive player, 700, 774 total yards, 11 touchdowns accounted for on offense with uh, to go with four takeaways, two interceptions. That's for Jordan Saunders. We have one more mm -hmm. that committed to college as well. Yes, and that's King and Queen 2023. Malik Holmes picks up a new offer at Emory and Henry. And Holmes racked up 7,394 total yards <laughs> out of the season, coach. <laughs> um, both both gentlemen, I know both, both of them. Not real close, like, you know, I know the boys over here and everything, but I, I know both of them, you know, from – Watch them play in the youth programs and everything like that. So, you know, both of them are extraordinary gentlemen. You know, young boys that, that, that you know, want something out of life. Both of them been going hard at trying to get these offers and everything. You know, you, you look at Jordan, you know, complete athlete, you know, on, on the basketball court, football field. You know, just all around athlete, you know. And for him to pick up his offer like that is not only just good for him, it's good for the people over there in West Side, right, you know, because yeah. they, because they, they know, you know, not only Tory Smith, but they now they got another one in Jordan that's possibly can be able to play real big boy football at the yes, next level. Yeah, you know what definitely. I mean? That's that's a good representation for, for them over there, not you know for the younger ones coming up to be able to follow him. You know, hopefully we can get him in the studios here in the next couple of yeah. weeks because you know he is on our one of our lists. And then you um, go to Malik Holmes. If you look at Malik Holmes, man, that boy, he, he brought that pride back in the, in the yes, Tigers up there in King yeah. Queen. You know, because for a while, you know, King Queen was, you know, either they didn't have a program, you know, for a couple of years. But then when he came back in with, you know, Malik and all those players up there, Mr. Mr. Burry up there and, and the Taekwondo Space and everything, they brought that pride back into the program. Right. You know, I got an older cousin. Well, not an older cousin. You know, he trying to act like he's my older cousin. <laughs> you know, like that Orlando Holmes. You know, he probably going to see this and laugh. But he trying to act like he's the older cousin sometimes. But he played up there at King Queen. And I know it made him real proud to see, you know, his alumni school being able to rise back to the top right. like how it was. You know, he played there. He also played at CNU and was able to go on in his life. And be able to do some, you know, pretty extraordinary things of being able to, you know, look back home and represent for King Queen. I know he's very proud, not just him, but other alumni that I know from up in that area. So, you know, a lot of them look at Malik as, 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 as the, the big dog. Right. You know, yeah. He's really brought the pride back into the school up there. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot of kids that's going to be following after him. He's another one that we should be having here in studios in, a, in you know, in a, in a couple of weeks once. Once he finished committing to yeah, where he's going and everything like that, you know, hopefully we can finish and get him on down here too. But like again, you know, I'm real proud of you gentlemen, you know, up there, King Queen Malik Holmes and over there at West Side, Jordan, Jordan Saunders, man. Fly, like, you like, like, go do what you got to do, you know, represent from where you're from and, and always remember, you know, it, it ain't just your family that you're trying to, you know, carry on your back. It's your whole, it's your whole area, your whole county. You know, the, the younger kids that's coming up behind you, you know, you got to represent for some, so might as well represent for them. And you also, congratulations to you, by the way, because you are now president of the Essex Youth Football Program. Yes. Am I right? Yes, sir. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's been a, been a, been a long time coming. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I played in the program when I was a little boy, you know, from like the age of 8 to 12, you know, before I went into the high school and everything like that then. You know, unfortunately, like I tell all, a lot of the kids, you know, I, I made mistakes, you know, that yeah. detoured a lot of stuff that happened in my earlier life, you know. But, you know, I went back out there when I was 2002. You know, I had my own kids that, you know, I was <laughs> 19 years old with a bag yeah. of baby, a boy. You know, so I had my kids coming along. So got back out there, started coaching in 2002 and been there ever since. 
So I mean, it's you know, it's my time to lead, to help lead the program. You know, right now we're looking for sponsors, looking for you know local businesses that maybe want to be able to donate to the program and everything like that. Cause we got a lot of stuff coming up as far as camps that we're going to be doing, um, training for the kids. We got to purchase a whole lot of new, you know, helmets and uniforms and shoulder pads and everything like that. So if you're a business in Tappahannock, Essex County, Virginia, you know, um, and you want to donate, sponsor, anything like that, reach out to me. My phone number is 804-246-9026. Lord, about to forget my own phone number. But again, you know, phone number 804-246-9026. Um, Coach T Bulldogs 2015 at yahoo.com. It's crazy because I still got the same email address from when the program was called Essex Bulldogs. Oh, wow. So that's all the way back in 2015. Back in the day. You know, so again, my email is Coach T Bulldogs 2015 at yahoo.com. Um, I got a nice board board of people with me. Um, Miss Ann Davis over here in Tappahannock, Tabitha Wickman. Um, I can't. Y'all forget because I'm not even going to remember all of y'all names right off the top of my head like it's going live like that. But I got a group, a good group of people behind me, a good board that's going to, you know, help take the SSG youth program to the next level. You know, a lot of great coaches coming back, one Devin Garnett and a, and a lot more. So, I mean, there's more information going to be coming in the, in the near future. So just tune in and, you know, look out for what we got coming in the future with SSG youth football and cheer. All right, Coach, let's get into uh, some matchups for Friday. This coming Friday in basketball. Then we'll get to the NFL. Yeah. Uh, Friday night, Westmoreland at Colonial Beach. Uh, Essex at Westmoreland. That's coming on Tuesday the 7th. And then yes, Northumberland sir. at Lancaster, which is Lancaster's at 16 and 0. Essex and Westmoreland, um, that's going to be a good game. You know, last, no. last one is sold out early. Yeah, so, very you know, which is that Essex at Westmoreland? Essex is at Westmoreland. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's going to set out, <laughs> you know, real quick again, you know, but it's going to be a rematch. You yes, know, and I, I'm pretty sure those boys are going to play even harder than they did the first time around. I think, you know, Westside came out on top of that one, right? One is 61 69. So, it was, it was, it was close, close to that. Yeah, it was very it was real close, close game. game. So, I mean, I'm, I'm predicting this one to be a real good one, too. You know, now who comes out on top? I, I, you know, I hope my, close to call. I, I hope my boys come out on top. <laughs> but again, that's that's what's one. They playing good ball. We playing good ball, and whoever whoever come to play play that day is going to be the ones that come out on top. All right, uh, Northumberland and Lancaster. Uh, we can't say nothing else about oh, Lancaster because we've already said it. We already said it. We already said it. You know, <laughs> already said it. You know I, I expect them to go undefeated the rest of the way out. All right, so let's get to the NFL. Yeah. Uh, was there any surprises over the weekend from Kansas City over Cincinnati, twenty-three twenty? What a game! I mean, that what that a was a game. game. I mean, that game for Riffery, it came down to the last quarter for Riffery. Right. And I mean, it, and for Riffery, I had it going in the overtime that big. You know, if that big unnecessary now, I was, roughness. I was really expecting came. overtime I, I until expected that overtime. unnecessary roughness. Now, granted. He was out of bounds. Yeah, and it, was, it was just a you wild can't push play. Him you can't you push him out. Can't push him out. I, I'm like a teammate. Why the hell are you gonna put your hands on him? You know, I know we don't want to be blaming our teammates and all that stuff, but man, that was the that was just a bad bad decision on right. that one. Yeah. But I mean, if you look at both quarterbacks, you know, um, Patrick Mahomes went 29 for 43, 326 yards, two touchdowns. Joe Burrow, you know, cool Joe, you know, Joe, I mean, Joe want to smoke cigars, have all the chains and everything <laughs> like that, man. But, you know, Joe, he went 26 for 4 to 1, 270 yards, one touchdown. But guess what? Two interceptions. Uh, and, yeah. In a big game like that, you pay a patch from home, you cannot afford to make okay. any mistakes. Any mistakes and those two interceptions cost them. You know, and not just that. Man, I mean, you know, if you look at the Chiefs D-line this week, they was coming after him. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, they, most they, they was coming after him. And, I mean, you know, the, the defense got five sacks, two interceptions. And, I mean, the main man on the D-line was Chris Jones. He was he was a big, big leader on that D-line. He got two sacks just by himself. And, I mean, there was very important sacks when Joe Burrow had a chance to be able to make a play. And next thing you know, you know, Chris Jones come up with a sack. You know, I mean, the Bengals, their, their run game really wasn't as strong as usual. 
you know, that pass game, I mean, it was there, but it wasn't dominant like always. I mean, and, uh, you know, Chiefs, they just had, a, you know, a regular game. You know, that, that run game really wasn't, wasn't that strong, you know, but the pass game was there. You know, it's just Mahomes was able to make plays with his feet. And, I mean, Mahomes proved why he's the best quarterback in yeah. the NFL right yeah, now. Yeah, most definitely. Hands down, he's the best quarterback in the NFL right now and, until somebody proves, proves him otherwise. And when we come back, we'll talk Eagles in San Francisco, who's headed to the Super Bowl, obviously, and some breaking news that happened from the NFL today about Sean Payton. We'll be right back here on No Next Sports Talk Live, right here, Hot Mix VA. DJ Turtle, providing DJ services for all occasions. Nothing too big or too small. DJ Turtle is the one to call. To book, email jamesturtlehumphrey43 at gmail.com or call 540-207-6434. We welcome you back into Northern Neck Sports Talk Live here on Hot Mix VA. We're live in the Hot Mix VA studios in Tappahannock, Virginia. If you're passing by the studio, go ahead and hop the hole. We'll, we'll wave at you. It's all good. Hey, man. <laughs> so, Coach, we have this brand new apparel one more time. If you want to get a Northern Neck Sports Talk Live t-shirt or apparel, talk to Tiffany Rich. Rich Intentions. I mean, this is awesome. I'm going to be wearing this like crazy now <laughs> since it's a nice... Warm hoodie, too. It's oh, yeah, very warm, man. by the way. Hey, you definitely need it now, man, because it's getting cold as I don't know what outside, man. I mean, as soon as you step outside, man, it feel like you're feeling in your bones yeah, or something, man. Yeah, most I don't know, maybe it's because I'm getting older or something. So, I mean, when it get cold, I feel it deep in my back, my neck, everything. I feel deep <laughs> I do, in too. I'm getting older, too. It's getting bones and yeah, man, yeah. back and neck. My, I mama, tell you. my mama used to tell me, boy, you gonna, you gonna wish you ain't never said you wanna be a grown up all early, man. That ain't gonna show I do wish it now. Sure. All right, let's get to Eagles in San Francisco. We yes, talked about Kansas City and Cincinnati, but Eagles rolling over San Francisco 31 to 7. What happened to San Francisco? I mean, for real, you know, San Francisco just, they couldn't get the quarterback situation straight for one. Right. You know, Brock, to be honest, I went to sleep. When the game first started, me and my son was watching the game, and I know I'm laying on the couch, nose on. And when I woke up, I was like, "Damn, what the hell, Brock Purdy?" And I seen that thing over. Yeah. I seen um Josh Johnson, and I'm like, "Where's Purdy?" He like, "Daddy, he just got hurt." I like, "Daddy, hey, man." So I mean, from the right. jump, you know, they couldn't get their quarterback situation figured out. You know, so I mean, at like, one point, at one play, it looked like they ran a wildcat. Yeah, but Chris awesome. McCaffrey was back there because I mean, you know, Christian McCaffrey, he's a he's just an athlete. Right. You know, he can get back there, run wild, can make some things happen. But I mean, you know, the Eagles defense was on one. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. they, they was everywhere. You know, they were stopping everything, and I mean, they was just like mad dogs getting to the point of attack of the ball. You know, what I mean, like if you look at the quarterbacks, Hurts, he went 15 for 25, 120 yards in that game. I, I can't even really say it because he ain't throwing yeah. no touchdowns. Oh, yeah, true. He ain't throwing no touchdowns. He ain't throwing no touchdowns, but all, 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 all of that, one all necessary because they still won 30 came, points. Yeah, so. which is, you're right. You know, all of their points came on the ground. You know, Boston Scott, he got six carries, 20 yards, one touchdown. And Game one got 14 carries, 48 yards. Miles Sanders got 11 carries, mm-hmm. 42 yards, and two touchdowns. Hurts got 11 carries, 39 yards, one touchdown. All their touchdowns came on the ground. You know, not a passing touchdown. A.J. Brown had four receptions, 28 yards. And, you know, Devontae Smith, he only had two receptions for 36 yards. So they weren't really potent in the air. It was just they was doing enough to, to win the game. Just you enough know, to win. Just enough to win. And if you look on the San Francisco side, Christian McCaffrey, he had 15 carries for 84 yards and a touchdown. Debo Samuels, I don't know where he has been for the last couple of games, but I mean yeah. – let this past game with him, he has six carries for a negative nine yards in a conference championship game. Come on, man. You you, you got to be able to do something to help your, your dominant running back and Christian McCaffrey help him. And then on top of that, you have a quarterback shortage. You, you, you know, you got Brock Purdy. His throwing arm is all jacked up. He can't even throw. They, all they do <laughs> is handing the ball off or he doing a little dink passes right there. He can't get downfield. So, I mean, Debo, you got to step up. Right. And, help, yeah. and help your team out. Then if you look at the, at the receiving core, you know, again, Debo Samuels, three receptions for 33 yards. 
George Kittle, he only had three three receptions for 32 yards. And I mean, McCaffrey had four receptions, 22 yards. You can't do nothing with that so, going up against the Eagles like that. If Jimmy Garoppolo was in this game, would we talk about a whole different game? Eagles may yeah. have still won, but it but you, could you, have been a close gonna, game. You're going to have a whole different type of game with Jimmy Garoppolo because at the end of the day, Hey, Jimmy got you that going. Jimmy got you to a Super Bowl before, all right? right? Yeah. You know, you didn't got to multiple playoff appearances with Jimmy. So I mean, you know, say what you want. Jimmy Garoppolo is is is, is a man that knows how to win. At, yeah. At the end of the day, and then you got Kyle Shanahan back there with these. I mean, he's a monster at his play calling skills. So I mean, yes, he is. I man, believe. Never should have let him go. I, I, yeah, <laughs> you're definitely right. I believe if they had their quarterback situation intact. They could have possibly came away and won, beat the Eagles, man. But you, you just have to have, you have to have a quarterback that's going to match up with that with Jalen Hurts. And I mean, Jalen Hurts and Nick, they they got that shot to play at the Super Bowl. But they yeah. got a tall, they got a tall mountain to climb when they come talking about Pat Mahomes. Yes, and, and they I mean, do. Pat Mahomes is is the top standard in quarterbacks right now. And I don't care who you is, until you beat him, man, that, that man is the man. And this is probably going to be one of the most interesting yeah. Super Bowls yeah. Yeah. for the first time in a very long yeah. time. Real quickly, let's get to some news about uh, Sean Payton. Sean Payton has been traded to the Denver Broncos. Right. News coming today. Uh, matter of fact, this afternoon, okay. Sean Payton, Coach Sean Payton, New Orleans Saints, traded to the Denver Broncos. Broncos, coach. I mean, that's going to be a good thing because I mean, regardless of how the, how the season turned out last year for Russell, uh, for um, Russell, Sean Payton is a certified certified coach. Sean got a right. you know Super Bowl and everything like that. So to have him coming in with with Russell and everything like that is it, it, it's going to be something good, you know. And I mean, Sean Sean Payton, he is certified, and I'm guaranteeing you that. Those players up there is going to listen to Sean Payton. They, they know he's not coming in to just be playing around. He, when he comes in, he's going to come in to be able to demean business and, and yep. want to win. Not to just be taking those slugs like I think it was taking last year. And then we had, there's there was talks on a, some national media, uh -huh. uh, ESPN. Uh, there were talks about where Tom Brady's going, where Aaron Rodgers going. Okay. Uh, there was talks about Tom Brady landing in Washington, which okay. I don't see that happening. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, he even said it himself. He just don't know where he's going. Yeah. Well, Tom needs to sit at home. <laughs> <laughs> Tom is 45 years old. Man, my, my, if I step out of my dump truck wrong, my body hurts. Right. So I know good and well Tom Brady is 45 years, be 46 when the season starts, getting hit and everything. And it ain't but so much more you need to, to prove or accomplish in the football world. Yeah. There's so nothing else on the There's nothing else. I mean, how many, more, all. how many more Super Bowls you want? <laughs> I mean, you can go to another team. That don't mean that you're going to win there. You right, know, yeah. Because, I mean, if you don't got the pieces around you to help you to produce, how can you look at look at this last season into took Tampa? I mean, even though you had Mike Evans, you had these, these different younger players that surround you, but you yourself wasn't really producing. Right. In my book, and I mean, but Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, I mean, did something different with him. You know, I mean, he he's just stringing Green Bay along. They they can mm -hmm. just go ahead, kick him to the rocks, and go ahead and bring that next man on up and, and see what you got in him. And before we go, Coach, who is our special guest next week by chance? Um, uh, we, we're gonna have to wait on that. We'll have to wait on we, that. We, that. It could be a surprise. That might be a surprise. You know, we got a couple people lined up. You know, and we just gotta make sure that um, their schedule. Matches up with our schedules, you know what I'm saying, and everything like that. And you know, we, but we, we still got some interviews coming, some good interviews. Y'all just gotta stay stay tuned and locked in with us, you know, because you never know who we're gonna have on here this year. 2023 is a new year. We're gonna have a you know a, a, a plethora of different people on, you know, to give out the game and knowledge to the youth in the area, and just come out and 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 chop it up with us, you know. And even even some of the fellas that the who got next. The rising seniors of the North yes. Texas coming up through the football ranks, basketball ranks. Stay tuned. We got a lot of players, man. Y'all just got to stay in with us. Keep tuned in with us. Get your popcorn ready like my homeboy will say. And just, you know, just come chilling with your boy.
And yes, indeed. Also, we have Showtime MMA Academy oh, yeah. events coming up as well. We're going to be getting them in the studio at some point or another uh -huh. before that event happens in April. Okay. So, guys, thank you so much on your radio dial. We appreciate each and every one of you that have tuned in tonight and is going to tune in on Thursday and wherever you may be listening from. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. You've been locked in to the top 10%. Shared globally sports show. Know the next sports talk live on Hot Mix VA. We bid you good night. Know the next sports talk live. Myself, Will Lewis, along with Coach Thomas Rowe.